there is a need to remind us that your daily living must become it must become very obvious who your king is i was watching a short clip at the world economic forum and a shaman shaman came and performed incantations and then went from one speaker to another who were world leaders and was blowing incantations on their head. Say you know that the world, there was no outrage. Nobody stood up and said, how can you be doing that in our world? Is it not economics we came to discuss? But if it had been a Christian that came there and stood and spoke in tongues, the whole internet would have been on fire. So because of the hostility, many Christians are growing within our ranks that don't have the confidence to stand out or to challenge what Satan is building. Because we are afraid that if we begin to model a life that is different, we'll be ostracized. And you see, the goal of the Christian life is to look like Jesus. If you are going to look like Jesus, first, you must imitate him. He must become the pattern. Have you read Hebrews chapter 12? Let's look at verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. He must become the pattern. You must imitate him. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Notice that the race has been set before you. The path you are going to travel is not you that arranges it. It has been set before you. Verse 2. Looking unto who? The Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Give me NLT, verse 2. NLT, if we have NLT. NLT, New Living Translation, verse 2. If we have. We do this, how do we do this? By keeping our eyes on Jesus. Who is Jesus? The champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Jesus is our perfect example. So if you are going to survive in this hostile environment and your vessel becomes one of those that bear the wine, you must know how to live for the king on a daily basis. And if you are going to learn how to live for the king on a daily basis, your example is Jesus. Why do, does the NLT use the word champion? Because the analogy that Paul seems to em, 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 employ here seems to indicate that we have seen people in chapter 11 cloud of witnesses who submitted themselves to this way of life and by faith they quelled the mouth of lions by faith they subdued nations by faith women received their dead back to life by faith men decided that they would not enjoy the pleasures of Egypt but they would rather suffer by faith Many were able to leave their kindred and go to a city where they did not know that they were going because they were looking for a city whose foundation and builder is God. They, they had lost every interest in this world. These are great examples, but there is a perfect example because those ones, even though they received the promise, they did not see the fulfillment. Are you with me? But Jesus becomes the perfect example because Jesus has already arrived at the finish line. He's already a champion. He has already fulfilled his journey completely. He is the initiator and the perfecter of our faith. He is the one we must begin to look at and imitate. So if you are going to be like Christ, you must imitate Christ. If you are going to be like Christ, you must share in his experiences. If you are going to arrive at that destination that allows for you to experience that eternal fellowship with God forever. 
Mr. Welt, that song you sang, I must learn it. I must learn that song. Ah, Holy Ghost. I, 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 as he was singing it, my heart was leaping for joy. Holy Ghost. What, what are the words again? I'm trying to remember. Holy Ghost, teach me to fellowship or help me to arrive at fellowship. Help me see Jesus. Help me know him as my, as my king. Holy Ghost, take me deeper into the realms of fellowship. My God. You know many of you sing songs that you don't mean. Some of you, the only thing you know about the song is the rhythm. Once you just press the keyboard, you say, oh, I've died, I've died. Wait till the tongue, the tongue, they talk. You don't know. So we are not listening to the words. You don't know that in, in, in Jacob. Because you see, thank you so much, sir. Esau is not, is not on the outside. Esau is on the inside. His family. And the way Esau is, is that Esau is a rash man. He's a man of the field. He is domineering. If Esau is in a place, he wants to throw his weight around. So sometimes where you see Esau and Jacob sitting, Jacob might not have a voice, even if, even if it is Jacob that is in alignment. Esau is loud. Esau will know that his parents do not want him to marry from outside. That is the main thing he will go and do. So what his parents call an abomination, Esau calls pleasure. Esau is part of the family. So Esau can be there on the inside. It's easy to deal with an enemy that is outside. But if the enemy is part of your family, he will be looking like you, but he will be doing things that will ensure that you never fulfill destiny. Never fulfill destiny. And one of the things that has happened in the body of Christ is that many Esau's have risen that don't, 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 don't hold the things that we hold sacred, sacred. And one of the things they have corrupted is our music. Our music. You don't know that in Jacob, music is doctrine. It's doctrine. When you sing, and that's why the old hymns were so powerful. So powerful. Many of them sang from the place of experience rooted in theology, in doctrine. Because it's, there's a way to know God. You can know God theologically. But the height of Christian experience is to move theology into experience. You know God. Not, not as a doctrine, but as a personal experience. So in this book of Psalms, the Bible says that while he revealed himself to, Mo, to the children of Israel by his acts, he revealed himself to Moses how? By his ways. So when you get to know God, there are dimensions of knowing God. Many Christians stop at the dimensions of acts where you know what God is doing. But there is a dimension that is his ways. You know why or how he does it. His ways, his methods. You know how he does it. The peak of dimension in the experience of God is his, is his will, where you know why he is doing it. So there's a why about God, there's a how about God, there's a what about God. Many Christians have embraced the what, and they are satisfied. But people on this journey that are experiencing the king on a daily basis, learning to be like Christ, imitating Christ, they have reached the peak of that experience, which is the will of God. And they know God's will. So every time things are happening to them, they understand why. Do you remember Jesus? The centurion stood at the foot of Jesus' cross and mocked him. Do you remember that story? Say, so if you are the son of God, come down. Save yourself and save those that are crucified with you. I can imagine Jesus laughing at him. I didn't come to save myself. I am exactly where I am supposed to be. So Jesus was not troubled by the shame, the reproach that the centurion was trying to bring to him. I know if it is a young man that has, that has received some grace. He said, come down! Say you say you are anointed. He say, don't let this oil curse you. He will be under pressure to jump from the tree. 
Because he wants to prove a point to the people at the foot of the cross. But Jesus understood the why. He understood. So he was willing to stay there even if the cross was a reproach. He stayed there. If you are going to become like Jesus, you must share in his experiences. And there are two critical experiences the Bible keeps telling us that we must share in. One is his death. His death. His death. One of my favorite scriptures, Romans chapter 8 and verse 17. Help me, media. Romans chapter 8 and verse 17. We must share in his death. Okay, this one is about his suffering. No, not, not, not the scripture. Um, Romans chapter 6 and verse 5. Romans chapter 6 and verse 5. Romans chapter 6 and verse 5, not 8, 17. 6, 5. Romans 6, 5. Give me Romans 6, 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, what will happen to us? We shall be also in the likeness of his what? If you want to experience glory, you must know the way of death. You must share in his experience of death. And what I'm going to show you is three things on how to prepare for the coming of the king. I, 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 that's, that's what I plan to show you. And these three things I'm going to show you, we reveal to you the life that Jesus lived. And hopefully when I'm done, you will feel a burden to pray. And ask God that your life, your life indeed, will enter into the shape that you can bear the new that he's trying to release. You know, I tell myself many times that I don't want to be alive. And God is saying, I want to do something in the, his generation, but I can't use him to do it. I can't use him to do it. So God is just marking time, waiting for us to die. So you know that the plans of God cannot be stopped. But God can suspend it, waiting for a generation that is willing to pay the price required to download that reality. Shay, you know that during the Azusa Street Revival, there was a prophecy that after 100 years, a revival so massive was going to break out. And Nigeria and Africa hmm, are among the nations because that revival... In the, that prophecy indicated that it will flow from Africa to the rest of the world. And in Africa, there's already a prophecy upon Nigeria that Nigeria is the trigger point. A trigger point. And we're on the horizon of that revival already. The question is, will you be numbered among the Lord's men when he begins to recruit Say you know that as God is trying to recruit, Satan too is trying to recruit. Satan. And as painful as it might sound, Satan has entered through Esau. Hmm? And he has men working for him on the inside. And you know what these men have gone after? Our doctrine. Gone after our sacred things. Gone over after the things that we consider holy. Everything goes now in Christian space. So when you put a believer side by side with a non-believer, you can no longer tell the difference. Yet our strength and our potency is in our uniqueness and separation. If you are going to be like Jesus, you must share in his experiences. And the number one is in his death. You must know how to die to this hostile environment, brethren. You must die to it. It's not everything that is popular that is accepted. You know they say in the world that the voice of the people is the voice of God. It's not true all the time. That everybody agrees with it does not mean that it is correct. That it is even producing results does not mean that it is correct. 
that it makes you feel good and gives you pleasure does not mean that God accepts it or that God has put his hand upon it. So the one who has determined that on my, in my daily life I will live for the king, you must know how to take reference from the king every day. Every day. So you go back to him to ask him when you finish your days, all your days activity, Lord, have I pleased you today? Have I brought your heart pleasure? Did I stand under your government? Everything I did, did I do by your leadership? Am I being controlled? Am I passions being governed by your commandments? Am I, my, are my ambitions in alignment with kingdom agenda? 